In this video we are going to learn about mapping a function in Google Earth Engine. The important thing to keep in mind is that mapping a function requires an array or list. I will tell what exactly that means, but first let's understand how mapping a function actually works. First I have created an array containing some numbers or objects of array. Next I created a function named multiply that has the argument x, a function always returns something, so I am asking it to multiply x by 2, and then return its value. Finally let's map this function we created over the array. I will create a new variable multiplied, and to map the function over the array we just have to write array, then we add, dot map, and inside the map method I will give my function. Also remember that JavaScript methods like map reduce etc always require a function. The map starts from lowercase m not upper. So, before I run the code let me explain what we did. We created an array and a function. We told the function to multiply your argument x by 2. Finally we map the function over the array. The map method will take every object of the array and iterate whatever function it is told and return us a new array with every element processed according to the function. In our case we said just multiply elements of array by 2. And now when I run the code, on the console a new array is created and see for yourself it has multiplied every object by 2. Google Earth Engine is calling it an object on its console, but don't worry it is indeed an array. Google Earth Engine displays all the results as GeoJSON on console. Let's map a function over an image collection. Remember in the beginning of the video I told that mapping a function requires array, so remember in Google Earth Engine. Datasets like image collection are considered as an array. You cannot map a function over single image. Instead use local raster operations. Please watch my video on that. I will import modus ndvi image collection and create a polygon. Next I will filter the image collection using the polygon and date filter. If we head to the data description of modus collection, we will find that NDVI ranges from minus 2000 to 10,000, and a scaling factor is given. I will copy the scaling factor. Next, I create a new function scale that takes the image argument. Inside the function I am telling it to multiply the image by the scaling factor we copied from modus description. After that I have added the copy properties method, basically telling the function to copy the metadata of the image too. Next I map the function over the image collection we filtered. When I run the code a new GeoJSON is created. Let us quickly display the first image from non-scaled and scaled image collections and check whether scaling has been implemented correctly or not. If I head to the inspector tab and click at any point on the image, it shows us pixel values of all the bands of the image at that point. Let's select the NDVI band only and then check the pixel value. Now, you can clearly see difference between non-scaled NDVI and scaled NDVI. If you learned something please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more beginners oriented Google Earth Engine videos. Code link given in video description. I will see you in the next one. Peace.